there's always been this self-imposed objection that I've wrestled with that has made me wonder if freelance UX work, particularly web design, is still lucrative. I mean, if you think about all the tools that there are to design websites now, and a lot of times they don't really require any prior knowledge to get started. Squarespace is probably the biggest example. And when I think about a service like that, people can create pretty good looking marketing websites just from using the templates that they have. So when thinking about that, it makes me wonder, why would a company hire a web designer when they can and pay thousands of dollars when they can just use a service like Squarespace and do it on their own. Truth be told, up until a couple weeks ago, I didn't have an answer to this question. I mean, before I even started UX, I actually designed a website using Squarespace because I had a physical ther uh, therapy side hustle that I was doing. And so I created a website from that. And while there are certain things that were a little bit difficult to learn and I couldn't customize it in the exact way that I wanted, I was still able to ultimately create a marketing website from it. And it, I never reached an obstacle where I thought, hey, maybe I should hire a web designer. And so with that being said, it made me wonder and makes me wonder now, like, why would someone pay to hire a web designer? It wasn't until I started taking this Webflow course called The Freelancer's Journey that I figured out an answer to this question. And once they provided an answer to this exact question, it just made a lot of sense to me. And there's a video in particular within this course that goes over this exact topic, and I'll be sure to post that in the description below. To give context, the video is a mock discussion between the instructor named McGuire and a pretend client, and they're having a discussion over web design services, and the client brings up the question, well, why can't we do this ourselves? And what happens next is <laughs> nothing short of magical. Like, I've said this before in other videos, but the, the production quality and just absolute majesty of Webflow tutorials is unlike anything I've seen. They have really raised the bar by a mile as far as what tutorials can and should be. Anyways, the instructor, McGuire, goes over a very detailed analysis of this question and breaks down this question into the actual motivations for why someone would even ask this question, as well as going over different tactics that one could use to address this question. And so he goes over this really in-depth analysis and then goes back and continues the role play and then has one of the most masterful responses I've ever heard when it comes to dealing with this question of, well, why can't we design this website on our own? The premise behind his response was counterintuitive to me, and it's to be upfront and genuine with the fact that, hey, you know what? You can make a website on your own. And that alone just shattered a lot of beliefs for me because if I were, if you were to ask me prior to watching this course how I would envision defending selling web design services, I would have probably done the exact opposite. And I would have said, oh, doing web design is incredibly complex and there's no way that you would be able to do this and kind of go over why there's so much complexity within the web design process. But McGuire challenges that belief by asserting that if I were to go over all the reasons why there's complexity with building a website, it implies that the client could not do it on their own. And that simply is not true. If the client wanted to go through the rigmarole of learning the steps needed to make a website and to go out and design one, they certainly can do that. It would be dishonest to say that they can't. And so what I like about this is um, the, the instructor's response is just very, uh, it's honest and it's genuine and I just really resonate with that. But he doesn't just stop at saying that they can build it themselves. That obviously is a very shitty sales pitch. He then goes over the fact that the main reason why someone would want to hire a web designer is because of the large amount of time investment it would take if they were to try to do it on their own. And what I really like in his approach is that he tailors it to their business. So in this scenario, the pretend client he's dealing with is an interior designer. And so he flips it on them and says, hey, if a client came to you 
and asked you this very question, I bet you could probably imagine that they could do interior design work on their own, but it would take a lot of time. It would take a lot of research to be able to do it. And likely the work that the interior designer would do would be far superior to the work that the their client would be able to do on their own. And therefore, the same thing goes for web design. So basically, the web designer is allowing the the client to save a lot of time by not having to build a website on their own, and they can focus that increased time to doing other high leverage or higher leverage activities, such as reaching out to clients, doing the actual you know work that their business does, and just sort of cultivating those um, client relationships. I relate this back to the PT side hustle that I did a few years ago. And I can't help but think that, yeah, I was able to make a marketing website with Squarespace, but it took me 30 to 40 hours to make. And I could have probably had a a much better use of my time by reaching out to potential clients, making content to uh, spread the message of what I do, as well as just, you know, doing the actual PT work that was part of my business. But the one sticking point I have with all of this is while even though this to me is a very sound reason for why someone would want to hire a web designer and why I feel like this is a very valid point to use if someone were to bring that question up on why couldn't we do this ourselves, I do think that a business has to be in the right state. Like for me, even if someone, even if a web designer were to come up to me you know, I'm talking three years ago when I was doing the PT thing and had no involvement in UX. If a web designer at that time would have come up to me and said, hey, I can save you a hundred hours and I can make you this amazing website, I probably would have still said no. And the reason was I was just way too much in the infancy of that side hustle. I wasn't really making a lot of money. And so therefore I didn't really have money to invest in someone designing a website for me. And so I think with this comes the importance of trying to find the right client because I think, and I could be wrong, but I, I think that if I were to try to find a business that was, they were a little too much in the infancy stage of their business, they wouldn't even have the resources to invest in a web designer. And so even if I can save them 100 hours, I have a hard time believing that they would. And again, that could just be a false belief that I have, but to me, at my in my current mindset, I feel like a business needs to already be generating some revenue in order to take the leap into hiring a web designer. Now, if you know of someone, or maybe you have landed a client um, who it was sort of in the early stages of business, I would really like to know because I would very much like to shatter this belief of mine. With that sticking point being said, I still think that the basic premise of Webflow's argument for why a client would want to pay for a web designer as opposed to doing it in-house is very sound. The main takeaway for me is to, you know, not have this flashy answer of trying to, you know, make web design sound like this incredibly overcomplicated thing, implying that the client can't do it but rather be honest and genuine and acknowledge that, you know, while the client certainly can undergo this project on their own and design their own website, it may not be the best of use of their time. And I really like the way of tying it into their business if it's a service-based business and saying how, hey, if a client came up to you and asked that same question, you know, I bet your reply would be, similar. You know, they could do the work on their own, but likely it's going to take a lot more time and the product or the quality of that work wouldn't be the same. And the same thing goes for the web designer's work. And um, I don't know, I just found that to be a pretty enlightening video. If you want to check out the Webflow video that I talked about, I put a link in the description below and it actually has the timestamp for when that actual topic comes up. And I actually just finished my first Webflow client project. So if you're interested in how that went, you can check out this video here. And if you've been getting value from some of these videos, I just have a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, that would help me out a lot. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.